Evil has found root in many dark and mysterious places in Middle Earth over the past three ages, from the darkest depths to the highest peaks, and from the blackest plains to the icy wastes. But there are eight places where the darkness gathered like a shroud and slowly smothered the life from the world. Greetings all, I am your guide, the Archivist. Today I'm going to cover eight fortresses of evil, the dark powers used to grow their strength from the shadow over the course of the three ages of Middle Earth. Isengard, the Stronghold of Saruman Isengard was once a great fortress for Gondor and the Men of the West, but eventually came under the control of Saruman the White. It housed great beauty and peace for many years under the watchful and careful eye of the Tower of Orthanc, but eventually came to darkness through Saruman's fear of the power of the Dark Lord Sauron. Fearing the wrath of the new Dark Lords rising, Saruman gave in to his terror and pledged himself to Sauron, secreted away from any watchful eyes for many moons until he ripped the goodness from Isengard's meadows and dug deep pits to spawn Urukai. Isengard was fully corrupted by evil during this time, with no green life remaining. This ultimately led to Saruman's downfall as he drew the eye of the Ents of Fangorn Forest, who defeated him completely and put an end to his alliance with the Dark Lord. Vanquished, Saruman abandoned the tower and fled, and Treebeard, leader of the Ents, returned Isengard to its former verdant glory in the years that followed. Mordor, the realm of Sauron, in the southeast of Middle-earth. After the defeat and imprisonment of Morgoth, the first Dark Lord, his apprentice and lieutenant Sauron took over the mantle of evil in Middle-earth. For many years he went into hiding, shape-shifting and influencing events for many factions from behind the scenes, including the Elves and Numenorians, before establishing a foothold in the southeast of Middle-earth. He created a new land, Mordor, in defiance of the lands of men, and with the Mountains of Shadow as a veil, he forged the stronghold of Barad-dûr and struck out to subjugate the West just as Morgoth had in his stead before him. Mordor stood for many years in defiance until Sauron's first defeat at the Battle of Dagalad, where Isildur cut the ring from his finger, but failed to destroy it. As a result, he persevered until the events of the Lord of the Rings, until he was eventually defeated entirely by Frodo, destroying the ring in the fires of Mount Doom. Dwimmerberg, Location of the Dark Door to the Paths of the Dead The dark and mysterious past of the Dwimmerberg was a haunting on the minds of men for many ages. In the second age, the men of this very mountain swore an oath to Isildur, the king of Gondor and the heir of the mantle of the west to come to his aid should he require their swords in the battle against Sauron, but they never came. Their ancestors worshipped Sauron as a god and defied the oath to Isildur, and so in turn he cursed them to unceasing life and to never rest until they came back to fulfill their oaths to the true heir of Gondor. This was a bastion of terrible evil for many moons, until Aragorn, blood of a sealed door, called on them to fulfill their oath at the Battle of Pelennor Fields, where they finally found rest after lending their aid to the men of the West finally. Dol Guldur, Sauron's Hill of Dark Sorcery in Mirkwood Residing in the south of Mirkwood, Dol Guldur, also known as the Hill of Dark Sorcery, was a stronghold and fortress for the Dark Powers during the long days of uncertainty before Sauron's return to power, featuring heavily in The Hobbit. Sauron regained his power here under the guise of the Necromancer, whilst he bided his time before returning to Mordor. Dol Guldur was once an elven fortress, a mighty capital of the Sylvan Elves led by King Orifer, who was the Sindarin King. Orifer was once Thranduil's father and Legolas's grandfather, However, after their withering, their once great location fell to darkness and became a source of power for evil things. Once the War of the Ring ended, Galadriel destroyed the fortress herself so evil would never rise there again. Angmar, the realm of the Lord of the Nazgul In the northern reaches of Middle-earth, in the location that once housed Ortumno, the ancient evil fortress of Morgoth, Angmar is the kingdom of the Witch King who is also known as the Witch King of Angmar. This cold and desolate locale is where the Witch King was able to consolidate power during the Third Age, and while Sauron regained his strength, the Witch King struck out and ultimately destroyed the kingdom of Arnor entirely, corrupting the men of Raudar, whilst crushing the regions of Arthurdain and Cardolan. The Witch King reached much destruction during this period before Angmar was
was eventually felled by Prince Aena in a belated attempt to come to the aid of the Arnorians. Once defeated here, the Witch King returned to Mordor and awaited his master's return and taking up residence in Minas Morgul later on. The Barrow Downs, corrupted by the Barrow Whites. The Barrow Downs, like many evil bastions, did not start as an evil place, but rather a location which is on the border of the Shire, originally a region belonging to the last men of Cardolan. In the novels for the Lord of the Rings, Frodo and his company travelled through this locale and encountered the Barrow Whites, which are evil spirit type creatures sent to the location by the Witch King to blight the land after the downfall of Arnor at his hand. The Downs were originally a burial ground to honour the dead for the men of the First Age, but the Witch King corrupted much of the lands defeated by him during the War of Arnor during the Age of Men. The Barrow Whites then took up residence in the deserted region to reap terror on those who strayed through the area. Minas Morgul, the former fortress of Gondor seized by Mordor. Minas Morgul, the once great proud bastion Minas Ithil, also known as the Tower of the Moon, was one of the primary seats of the Dark Powers during the War of the Ring. After the Witch King's flight from Angmar, he took up residence in Minas Morgul and twisted it further to his dark and mysterious powers. Minas Ithil was held by a garrison after the Second Age for many years, but a plague left the city a shadow of itself and it was taken by the Dark Powers as a fortress. The fortress lay on the passageway between Gondor and Mordor, becoming the perfect staging ground for the assault on the west. With its capture, Sauron had total control over all passage into Mordor, giving him complete knowledge of invasion. After the War of the Ring, Aragorn decreed that Minas Morgul be destroyed, like many other dark fortresses were, to stop evil taking root there again. Autumno, the fortress of Morgoth, in the far north of Middle-earth. Residing in the cold and bitter far north of Middle-earth, across the great wasteland during the First Age, the ancient evil fortress of Autumno was the seat of power for the first Dark Lord Morgoth, formerly known as Melkor the Valar. Morgoth was originally one of the Valar but always coveted more power for himself, and so stole great power in the form of the Silmarils, burned the gold and silver trees of Valinor and fled with Ungoliant the Great Spider to Middle-earth. He then founded his dark fortress and bred many dark beasts, including orcs and dragons to do his bidding in a grand network of tunnels. He used all the evil in the world to create them, twisting captive elves into orcs and creating trolls and other foul things. Morgoth was allowed by the Valar to exist for millennia building his dark seat in the world, but after many campaigns against him was finally thrown down, at great cost to the elves and men of Middle-earth. The final world-changing battle resulting in the destruction of Morgoth and Untumno was so vast and terrible that much of the known world sunk into the sea at that time, forming the landscape known in the Second and Third Ages. And so I have now covered the content for this video, but if there's anything that has been missed, please share them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this content, please remember to like the subscribe and like waystones down below. Naluwe Gavanidvan. Until we meet again.